In today's video, we are going to look at electrolysis of acidified water. We want to see the effect of passing electricity to water that we have acidified. So we all know that water is actually a poor conductor of electricity, but once we add some little acid to it, like the dilute sulfuric acid, the ability of this water to conduct electricity is slightly enhanced. So we need a setup of this kind. We need our direct current supply present. And in this case, from this cell, we can see that this is our anode. This is the longer terminal. So this will be our anode, while the shorter one will be the negatively charged terminal. So once we close our switch in this setup, we shall induce the carbon electrodes being used to become polarized. And in this case, the one connected to the positive terminal will become our anode. That means it will be positively charged relative to the other electrode. And the one connected to the negative terminal will now become our cathode. So we need to know the ions present in our electrolyte. This solution here is our electrolyte and it is acidified water. So this is the electrolyte through which we are going to pass our electricity. So we need to first identify the ions present in our electrolyte. So since we have acidified water, we know that water can slightly dissociate. So water is good at slightly dissociating into the hydrogen ions together with the hydroxide ions. So these are the ions which will be produced by our water. However, because we added some sulfuric acid to our water, we also have the sulfuric acid ionizing. So our sulfuric acid will ionize completely into the hydrogen ions and the sulfate ions, aqueous. So you can balance it. So the ions present, we have the positively charged hydrogen ions. Let us put aqueous. We have the negatively charged hydroxide ions. And then we have the negatively charged sulfate ions. So these are the ions present in our solution. So now let us see what will happen when we close switch, when we close our switch. Let us say switch K, when we close switch K, let us see what happens to the ions in this solution because we have these three ions in our acidified water. So we have our cathode. Let us first not them down. We have our anode. This electrode is positively charged while the other one is negatively charged. So in our solution, we have the hydrogen ions. We have the sulfate ions and we have the hydroxide ions. So when we close our switch K, what will happen is that the positively charged ions will have, will move towards the cathode, which is negatively charged because opposite charges attract. And when the hydrogen ions reach our cathode, what happens is that they will pick electrons from our cathode and get discharged. So our hydrogen ions at the cathode, when they arrive at the cathode, they will pick one electron each to form a hydrogen atom. However, we all know that hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. So hydrogen is made up of two atoms in its free form. So that means we need two hydrogen ions picking up two electrons from our negatively charged cathode to form our hydrogen gas. So this is the equation for the reaction occurring at the cathode. And because we are having addition of electrons, this is known as reduction. This process is a reduction reaction. Remember oil rig, oxidation is loss. 
while reduction is gain of electrons. So the hydrogen ions are gaining electrons. So we shall say this is a reduction process. So at that point, we shall see bubbles of a colorless gas that will always burn with a pop sound being evolved at our cathode as an observation because whenever a gas is in a liquid, we see it in form of bubbles as it is escaping. However, we also have a reaction at our anode. So let us try and see what happens. Our anode is positively charged. So the negatively charged ions, the sulfate and the hydroxide will migrate towards our anode, which is positively charged. However, we shall have preferential discharge. That is to say, one of these two ions, the hydroxide and the sulfate will be preferred. So the one which is easier to discharge will be preferred in this case. And in this case, the hydroxide ions are preferred. We shall have a, a look at a video on preferential discharge of ions. So the hydroxide ion will lose an electron, but in this case, we shall actually need four of them, losing four electrons to form our water, oxygen. So we shall add our four electrons this side. So balancing the equation, we shall put it to here. So instead of saying minus four electrons, it's better to add them, that's why I put them on the product side. So this is the overall equation taking place at the anode. Four hydroxide ions lose four electrons to form our water and oxygen gas. So our oxygen gas will also be seen in form of bubbles escaping at our anode. So if we are to combine the two equations at the cathode and the anode, that is to say, considering four electrons, remember the four electrons being lost by the hydroxide ions are being gained by the hydrogen ions at the cathode. So when we come up with an overall equation, we shall have our water, which is a liquid. It will be breaking down to form our hydrogen gas at the cathode plus our oxygen gas at the anode. So you realize that when you balance the equation, it shows that the ratio of the production of hydrogen to oxygen is two to one in terms of volume. So if you produce 100 cubic centimeters of hydrogen, that means you will produce 50 cubic centimeters of oxygen. So the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is two to one, but this becomes our overall equation. Water is being split into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas at the respective electrodes. That's all about acidified water. If you find this content useful, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe so that whenever I upload new content, you're among the first people to be notified. Stay well.